Morning. Now, up to 100,000 patients in the United Kingdom are to have their entire genetic code mapped as part of an ambitious public health project. The aim is to help create personalised treatments for people with cancer and rare diseases and to keep Britain at the very forefront of the biotechnology and pharmaceutical industries. But there are concerns that the huge amount of data collected could end up being passed on or sold on to private companies. Here's our science reporter, Asha Tanner. It was 60 years ago when British scientists Watson and Crick discovered DNA, the chemical code that makes us who we are. Today, the Prime Minister is once again turning to our scientists to help Britain become the first country in the world to introduce high-tech DNA mapping for cancer patients within the NHS. The, the big challenge is that the cancer itself is extremely complex. There's a lot of damage to the genetic material within the cancer. We know that part of those changes mean that they respond to the treatment, but some of the changes mean they become resistant. And to really make sense of who should get which treatment, who will benefit, we need to get much better maps of the damage to those cancer genetic cells. Up to 100,000 patients with cancer and other rare diseases in England will have their entire genetic code sequenced unless they opt out. Doctors say with this information, personalised treatments could be tailored to individual needs and that could significantly reduce the number of premature deaths from cancer within a generation. These 24 volumes contain the blueprint of one human genome. That's three billion letters of DNA code. By creating the genetic profile of tens of thousands of patients, scientists say they hope to find out why some people's genetic makeup responds better to medicine and could lead to better treatments. When the genome sequencing and analysis will start is still unknown. The government has pledged £100 million over the next three to five years. It insists the project is solely for medical research, but there are concerns that personal data could be shared with private companies, affecting people's civil liberties. We could all have our genomes linked to our electronic medical records. And your DNA is like a genetic fingerprint, so it can be used to track you and your relatives and identify those records. So that's really the end of privacy if all of us are on that database. The price of genome sequencing may be falling, but sceptics say there are better ways to spend this money. They argue that genes are poor predictors of disease and people's lifestyles have a bigger role to play. Asha Tanner, well, we're joined now from Denmark by former research scientist and journalist Lona Frank, who wrote about her own genetic history, and Dr Stuart Hogarth from the Department of Social Science, Health and Medicine at King's College London. Uh, Lona Frank, um, uh, why are you so passionately in favour of this, given the risks that your entire identity could end up on the uh, database of some pharmaceutical about, which might well do anything with it? Well, I don't know if, if I would say passionate, but I'm definitely uh, for the idea that we use genetic information to get as much as we can out of it uh, as, as regarding new treatments, um, new medications. Uh, and, and, you know, <laughs> who brings new medications to us? Researchers and drug companies. And I don't think there's anything in my genome that a drug company could look at and, you know, do anything bad with. Well, the very interesting thing here is that we might have expected this move to come from the Department of Health, the Ministry of Health, but in fact it's come from the Department of Business. So that would suggest that there's big money in this. There probably is in the long term, and there's also big improvement in, in health care and in treatments. But of course, I mean, we're in the, uh, the midst of an economic crisis. I would imagine that uh, politicians are thinking we have this big resource how can we exploit it uh, for the benefit of patients, but also for economic benefits? Well, all this sounds extremely reasonable, Dr. Hogarth. Well, what are your misgivings? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that in terms of the report that's been issued today by the government, there's uh, a great deal that's to be welcomed. Uh, there's no doubt that at this stage, we are uh, in the midst of a very exciting techno technological revolution in terms of the speed with which we can sequence human genomes and the cost of sequencing human genomes. But you think is, a lot of this stuff's plummeting. out there already? However, I think the problems with the report come in the, uh, the promise, the hype 
that's around the idea that the genetics of common complex diseases uh, can be uncovered and we can move into an age of genomic medicine where the uh, risk predictions uh, about our risks of, say, heart disease or, or cancer or so forth are going to play a major role in determining our health care. Now, the reality is we've been trying to unravel the genetics of common complex diseases for many, many years. And thus far, although we've made progress, thus far, what we know so far, really isn't worth putting into clinical practice. Well, let's put that, that, that to Lorna Frank. I mean, Lorna Frank, you were driven by a very personal desire to know about your genes. Right. But I would say that uh, uh, what Dr. Hogarth is saying here, that is, we don't know very much at the moment, and therefore we won't be able to know very much in the future. And that is just not the reality of it. The reason we don't know very much about the genetic causes of common disease is that we have not been able to have tens of thousands of whole genomes. We have been looking at single genes at a time. Now what we have and what we must do to you know, know more about the heritability of disease uh, we must compare tens of thousands of full genomes with people's lifestyles and health records and you know what they eat, what they, kind of medications they take to get at the interactions of environment and genes, to be able to predict much more or much better than, than we can today. And it is the only way forward. Well, there's absolutely no doubt that the new technologies that we have now are going to be able to allow us to interrogate the genome at a far greater level of granular detail than we've been able to do before. The question that remains unanswered and is a matter of conjecture is the scale and the pace of change in terms of how quickly we're going to find information that is actually genuinely clinically actionable. Could I and, throw one curveball yes. into this? I mean, after all, actually, our uh, record for storing and using data, particularly in the health service, has actually been extremely poor so far. So why should this be any better? Well, I think there are serious issues around what seems to be uh, bubbling under uh, the kind of intent of the report and certainly the, the earlier report from the Human Genomic Strategy Group at the beginning of the year which was the idea that every patient in the NHS should have their genome sequenced and that should be stored in the cloud somewhere. Now the kind of bargain that the government's asking us to make as citizens is give us your genomic data and we will revolutionise healthcare. It's not clear that we need that much data to do the research. It's not clear how revolutionary it will in fact be well, and it's not clear whether the government has the capacity to deliver that kind we, of large-scale IT project. We must leave these doubts in the air but I want to thank you and indeed uh, Lorna from Denmark too. Thank you thank both you. very warmly.